So, hello everyone. My name is Jacob van Klaveren. I work at the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment, RFM, in the Netherlands. This lecture is called Lecture 1. It's in a series of three lectures and a hands-on training that we will provide as part of the European funded project FNS Cloud. The first lecture is about international interest in total diet studies. So for this, it's good to understand what is a total diet study and why is it so important at the international level. And that's also the reason why the European Commission has funded the European project called the TDS and we are now continuing with demonstrators in the FNS Cloud project. So first of all, a very important starting point is the guidance being released in 2011 by the European Food Safety Authority the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations and the World Health Organization. They jointly wrote a guidance on how to perform a total diet study with the aim that this data is important for future risk assessment. So the link to the guidance is stated on this slide. For those that are interested can have a deeper look. But total diet studies means that you sample food on the market that you prepare the food according to household preparation methods, cooking or baking, and that you analyze it for chemicals of interest that could have an impact on human health. So following this guidance and also the interest of the European Food Safety Authority and the European Commission, a European funded project was launched in 2012 and that lasted until 2016 called the Total Diet Study TDS European Project. It was coordinated by the French Agency for Food, Environment and Occupational Health, ANSES, and it produced useful results based on input from everywhere, uh, each country in Europe. There were experts on Total Diet Studies, experts on risk assessment, but also some countries performed Total Diet Studies, and there was a wish to continue with total diet studies by setting up pilot studies in certain countries. So it's about measuring concentrations of hazardous chemicals, like for example heavy metals or acrylamide or pesticides, and these are analyzed in so-called pooled homogenized food samples. Pooled mean that you pool a lot of apples from different locations where you bought the apples in stores and that you pull them together and you homogenize them in one sample and that sample will then be analyzed for the concentration of that chemical. And that value will be used in risk assessment later on. So it's an average concentration over time and that's fine because we also, most of the chemicals do have an effect over longer time in your body. So this is a way that you can collect a meaningful data from all over your country. But the harmonization is then important and the, quali the quality of the data is also important. So for this, in this project, also so-called standard operating procedures were written, shortly SOPS, to ensure quality and consistency of TDS data generation and what type of shops there are will come into the next slide. These standard operator procedures were tested, whether they were workable in so-called pilot studies for countries that did a TDS for the first time. And then the data were used in exposure assessment. So what about these standard operator procedures? They were written in this European funded project. There is one about how do you collect the food in your country, how many samples from the north or the south part of your country, how many samples in winter or in summer, because some chemicals might have different concentrations in summers and in winter in the food. So the food needs to collect it in a kind of uh, well-organized manner, and that's why these standard operator procedures are so important. Then the food is stored at the laboratory and you start preparing the food according to household procedures. For example, if you want to know some heavy metals in beef, you have to think about how to bake or cook the beef. Well, it's baking, but is that rare or is that 
half or medium done or well done. So all these operator procedures need to be uh, in place and you can then also show that you have done the job uh, according to standards. The same for the analytical quality. If you do the analysis in your laboratory, you need to think about a well validated analytical method and how that is be used in this TDS. And finally, that results in data. So these standard operator procedures has been tested in the pilot uh, countries and these were the Czech Republic, Germany, Finland, Iceland and Portugal. And they saw that the standard operator procedures were working nicely but in certain countries there were certain conditions that they could not be exactly followed. So it's not a full standardization and that's also not needed, but it's very well harmonized. And that ensures us that the data from these studies are comparable and well organized. And the other thing that these pilot countries decided is to work on the FoodEx coding system. That's the way how we code our food items. So if you talk about an apple, it has a food X code. If you talk about a beer, it has a food X code. And if that's coded in all the countries the same, you can compare the different beers of different countries. So the coverage of the food items is great in this pilot study. You see there are food items from all the food groups, like meat and meat products, or fruit and vegetables, milk and dairy projects, etc., etc. But the fruit and fruit, fruit and fruit products could also contain apples, pears, or mandarins, or different items, and that is then also well balanced. And sometimes it's not complete because you cannot measure it. all the food items. But a good coverage should be ensured. They also discovered that there could be some variations over the different seasons. If you talk about mycotoxins in your food then it might be higher when it's wet weather, so it might be higher in autumn uh, than in summer where there is usually dry weather. So seasonal variation might be important if you collect the food items and if you want to have a well-spread overview over the seasons. The same for regions, sometimes there might be some more contaminated foods in the north than in the south. We don't know, but we want to include regional and seasonal variation. So this is very important and that's also why there are uh, different international workshops on how the total diet set studies uh, can work together. And this is one organized by the World Health Organization in 2015 in Korea. And at that workshop there were also uh, the European funded projects also presented their approach Likewise, they did in the Canada and the USA, etc. And from this workshop, recommendations were written, say, well, it's good and countries are encouraged to conduct such a total diet study because it's an efficient way to get some impression about the food and the quality of the food uh, with hazardous chemicals. And it's also a cost-effective way to do so particularly if countries don't have much resources, it could be an effective way to generate some data and to have some impression. Th this workshop also concluded that the software that was then further uh, used internationally in this TDS European project, called the Monte Carlo Risk Assessment, uh, was a good way to harmonize uh, over the countries and to see whether the, the results, the risk assessment results, could be comparable at the international level. But it also needs a kind of organization uh, because the software might need training, etc. And for this, the World Health Organization works together with collaborative centers in different member states, and the RFM is such a center, and we provide some follow up training using the total diet study data. So then it's harmonized by the standard operator procedures. We have international workshops and we now are moving towards using software and see whether that is also possible in a harmonized way. So if you have analytical results from your laboratory, you need to think about certain things 
for example, sometimes you have analyzed a food item and you don't find a positive result. That's called left sensor data. And that is associated with the limit of quantification or the limit of detection of the analytical method. And if it's below, then you cannot be sure whether it's a real zero or that it was just not detected. That might pose some problems in the risk assessment. What do we do with all those data that were called non-detected? So this is also harmonized in the MCRA software. The food classification is then important. If countries using their national codes, it will not be easy to compare because they are different. But for these reasons, EFSA worked for many years uh, with the European member states to agree on an international food classification system called the FOODEX. And this is then also embedded into the MCRA software and it makes the countries also comparable. So the Monte Carlo risk assessment software, it's about 20 years ago we started to program this software based for national purposes, but now we do a lot of cooperation with the European Food Safety Authority to make this software internationally available. And not only for total diet studies, also mainly for risk assessment of chemical mixtures and pesticides, but for many different reasons the MCRA is there. And it can also be used for harmonized TDS approaches. So we have a harmonized uh, classification system, we have the standard operator procedures, and we have an MCRA which is successfully used internationally and can also be used for total diet study results interpretation. So this was then uh, also taken up by the European funded project FNS Cloud. And uh, apart from this project, uh, there was also a sixth international workshop organized by the World Health Organization together with the Federal Institute of for Risk Assessment, BFR. And BFR is also a partner in this FNS Cloud. So jointly with BFR and the World Health Organization, we organized a training during that workshop to see again whether the total diet study centers could use the MCRA software or that they need help or that they could work as a community of practice. During this workshop, the BFR uh, showed how they worked through a total diet studies in their country, which was originally the pilot study. They showed how they planned a total diet study by making a shopping list, which food to buy, where, and they discussed with their government which chemicals to include, so it was a kind of planning phase. Then they went to the retail shops uh, or to the supermarkets or to local markets. They bought the food items from their shopping list. They went back to their kitchen. They prepared the food according to household standard procedures. And then they pulled the samples and went to the analytical department for analyzing the pooled samples and that resulted into data that's going to be used in risk assessment. So all together they had 19 food groups, 356 separated food items and a lot of pooled samples, 3220 that were analyzed in the labs. So that was according to the standard operator procedures nicely done. We also then agreed with the World Health Organization and BFR to have a training on 7th October 2020 to start thinking about the community of practice of these TDS centers and to see whether they are, uh, could use the Monte Carlo risk assessment, the harmonized software, uh, for this purpose. So that went very successful. People were very well able to do so. So from here on, we started to, to discuss how could TDS centers become a community of practice or a user group? Because in the, in the future they need to organize data, they need to be ensured that MCRA can be used for them, uh, follow up things might happening in that community of practice. We also realized that MCRA, the software being used in this community of practice, needs to go to, to the cloud, which is the Azure cloud for RFEM. And this is then linked to the FNS cloud because it's a cloud project. And what is a cloud? 
MCRA is in the cloud. It's organized uh, virtually. Uh, you can just, as the photographs that you take during your holiday, you upload them to the cloud. And if you have more photographs, you just hire more cloud capacity to store your photographs. The same is done with MCRA. If there are many users in your community of practice, the cloud just copy MCRA, make more space available for more users. So we have actually more virtual computers in the cloud based on a command based on the number of people in a community of practice. So this could also be applied uh, for classes, for students, then they can ask for such a cloud room and uh, the university responsible for that training could just hire cloud capacity. Then MCRA, they have to contact MCRA technical people to do that for them, but that can be done in very short time. It's all fully under control and we can just copy MCRA into the cloud as many students there are in a classroom. So it can be used in training classes and we will focus on community of practices for the TDS centers.